Disc Golf Fans Rejoice. This is Jamie Thomas and Heiser Cinema. Today, I am bringing a very special, near and dear to my heart tournament to you guys. This is the Anderson Valley Brewing Company presents the 25th San Francisco Safari. And with me today, my special guest commentator, a very good friend of mine, and the TD for this tournament for the last three years, I've got Sean Jack, a San Francisco local, stepping in. How you guys doing? All right, today we have an awesome lead card. I've got Greg Barsby, Shasta Chris, Doug Jensen, all chasing this young prodigy, sponsored kid, James Proctor, through the longs, the teeth of San Francisco is showing today. Let's get started with some action. Starting off on hole one on my home course, Golden Gate Park, we're in the longs today. It's a very tough course, and we've got a, gonna have a headwind coming in, so it makes it that much tougher, even for these pros, to uh, get the accuracy and the technicality on these shots that this course requires. And Sean Jacks here is introducing Runner, Park, our lead card. Oh, dude. Rob Ryan just aced hole nine to start the third round, leader of the uh, men's masters. And if you didn't see it, rewind back, check it out, catch back up with us at this point, and we're going to have James Proctor leading us off. He's see, been, this, this whole play is longer than everyone thinks it does. He threw a mid-range there, and he's still way short. He's still going to have a very long look at it, and you'll notice he will use this style all day. He's got a very big uh, hit point, and he's going to heiser flip a lot of his discs into turnovers, where a lot of other guys have to ante to get that sort of right finish on their discs. Barsby will opt for a forehand here, and he's got the height, and he hits the gap beautifully. He's going to be just outside the circle. He didn't get as much of a skip as he would have liked. But that was a nice shot there. And who do we have coming up next? We have the dark horse of the tournament, Doug Jensen from Nevada, California, Stafford Lake. Uh, he plays at Golden Gate a lot, too, but he had a great tournament. Anytime you ever hear of a player coming from Stafford Lake, you know they can bomb, because that is a bomber's course. There's a lot of huge shots out of there. Oh, Doug got a bad kick right there. Definitely, and he'll be to the left of the A-pin. He's going to have to get a good upshot out of that in order to save his three and not lose strokes early. Finally on the tee for the lead card, Shasta Chris. He's a local favorite. Everybody loves playing with him, representing Team DGA, who is a very good. Oh, he saw that off. He has to get lucky. He will flex out slowly. He's going to have a side door look at it. Doug's got a tough shot here with the low ceiling. This is taking a knee, trying to get a mid-range up an incline with a ceiling. Ah, uh, didn't tough. quite get it. And you can see this is what you're talking about, Sean. The uh, James Proctor's a little bit short. That's not an easy putt. Nope. Uh, elevation caught up to the bass, caught up to the disc. And you'll see the bush there is is making sure you have to get high enough. It, it's just oh. enough to think about. And uh, Doug wasn't able to correct off of that Shots mistake. from like 40. <sighs> Had the height. Had the line tailed out just a little bit too soon. And here's Barsby taking advantage of his opportunities early, just like an experienced player of his stature is going to do. He's only going to be three back now with 21 holes left. Everybody will tap in here. And uh, this next hole coming up, this is another one. If you're a pro, if you're an am, you have to get it. This one plays my favorite side. Nice little lefty hyzer coming up. This hole's just a notch over 200 feet. And uh, don't mind if I brag, but I was able to get it all three rounds in the tournament, even though I'm playing on the am side. So I have a lot of love for this hole. It is the easiest hole in the course, Jamie. You definitely have to get this hole. And who better to do it? Forehand master. I like the himself. forehand hole here. I like the forehand shot here. This is a neck check. Yep. Ooh. See, that's a line right there that that's an aggressive shot. He can either play it for the soft landing or he can play the skip, which is how Locked I've seen this. a little early right here. I've seen this yep. little ace most. A little early, got the tree. It'll still be okay. He's going to have a long look for birdie. Shasta Chris. Shasta's got one of the best mid range backhand games I've ever seen. Nice shot. He just hit. You could see the needles covering the ground there. Uh, just prevented the slide as much as if you get up onto the little more bald good. parts of this hill. And that's Oh, uh, that's a park job. That's exactly how you want to play this hole. Don't get it too high in the air. Just let it slide up to the pin and nice tap into. Proctor didn't want this putt on this hole. Just falls short. And he's going to lose another stroke to Barsby early. And suddenly, a four... Stroke lead 
turns into two. Looks like James might lose stroke the entire field in the league card right here. Uh, he will be the reason they don't get the par frame, but it's all right. There's a lot of great golf coming up from this guy. For those of you that don't know about him, check him out. He is Team Prodigy sponsored, uh, and he's got a cannon. From watching, following him around all day, I can tell you the kid can throw, and uh, just another addition. One to of the nicest kids you'll ever meet, too. Absolutely. Really humble kid. Absolutely. Great for the game. Another fine NorCal disc golfer. This hole is sponsored by uh, Hunt High, the Silver Fox. Silver Fox, a legend in disc golf. If you don't know about Hunt Hyde, you need to learn your facts. He taught me one of the greatest warm-ups that you can have. He will play catch for hours with a putter. This shot looks pretty good. Oh, that's OB right there. OB and beyond on that path. That's a tough start. And this is, uh, you're going to see this running path that goes down the right side of holes 3, 4, and 5, and it will come into play. Uh, it makes 3, 4, and 5 a little bit of a tougher stretch than... Uh, you know, you would think looking at the openness of the fairway, you've got to make sure you just stays in bounds, doesn't kick the wrong way. And doesn't do that. And that's actually going out to the city. That may be down in, on Fulton. Here's Proctor. He's going to show off a little bit of his arm because that is fairway driver speed at most. So that's a good shot. He's still short though, like 35. Doug has to re tee here because he was essentially never in bounds. That's uh, what a lot of people will opt to do. Ooh, he's playing dangerous again. Wraps the guardian tree. He's going to be a little deep there. Looks like he's got a 45 footer. Barsby hit, takes his mark and uh, put it between these two trees into the protected It's actually not the easiest is. little up shot. You have to keep it straight and you have to get it into that window in order to have a look. Here's Shasta Chris. Ranging. Oh. Nice. All the way out from birdie. That's a big putt right there. He was right behind Force tee pad. And he's going to be the only person to take a two on this hole. He's actually gaining two strokes on a couple of the guys. And with the couple out of bounds strokes, he will gain uh, two now. Yeah. You know, this hole's only 370, but getting a three on it's never that never a bad deal. This is definitely a hole that a three is okay in this position, especially if the wind's playing tricky. Uh, and though it doesn't blow consistently at Golden Gate when it gusts, it can make this course that much more of a pain. And now we're coming up to a pretty famous hole in the uh, Barsby and San Francisco Safari Saga. Two years ago, it came down to a playoff, and this was the hole that got Barsby and the local boy Danny Kerfeld won with a tremendous putt uphill talk about a dark horse and this is uh when he made that putt the tricky part of this hole is it goes down you have to make it through these gaps in the trees down and then back up onto the plateau and as you can see the branches of these that trees are hanging ooh. out wide we call that bogey town over there that's very tough hopefully he'll be between uh the trees and have a nice gap at the basket that but looks like a pretty oh tough kick and doug's also this is one of the hardest shortest holes i've ever played it's only like what is it, 240? 282, but it's really tight. This is looking nice. It leaves it a little short. You have to think uh, he's a little timid. You know, Barsby, you know, he, he'll admit this is not his best hole on the course, and uh, it, it's shown so far today that he's got a long putt to save par. And here's a birdie run by James Proctor. Just goes over the top. This is the putt that Danny uh, made to beat him in 2012. Very, very similar. Barsby leaves Greg that can't one a little it. bit long. I'm telling you, if you kick to the left on this hole, it's tough up and down. And Shasta Chris for birdie. Ah, just a little high, but good run there. Off the top of the cage, nobody's going to get hole four. And we're going to move on from hole four to what many people consider to be the signature hole of the course, or at least the signature hole of the front nine. For sure, hole five, I believe they built the entire front nine around this hole. It, uh, it's, th it's the prettiest, and uh, I think it scores the highest, especially in the C-pin, which is just over 400 feet. The tunnel the entire way, OB on the right side. I've seen good players go OB twice, and I want to give a shout out specifically to Memphis Minis Barbecue. They brought us free lunch for all the players and staff on Saturday, and it was amazing. It was excellent. I definitely stopped halfway through my round when we passed Tournament Central and grabbed some brisket, and it was phenomenal. 
help me get a couple birdies later on in the tournament. Shaft is taking the, uh, the OB line. He's going down the path, which plays OB the whole way. And he's not going to come out of that. He's going to stay straight. He didn't keep it on a hyzer enough, whether it was the disc or the wind, I'm not sure. Um, but he will have to take a mark. And this is one of those pins where... Proctor's taking the traditional route. No, nope. back kick. Yep, you're going to see people take different lines. You'll see somebody go outright. You'll see somebody throw it up the gut. But you have to get up the gut, stay up on the ridge, and then go over to the left. That looks pretty good. That's kind of high hard early, but... Just yes. catches that branch. Oh, no. And Doug can't believe it. He thought he had Park Job all the way with that one. An opportunity for Greg after taking a four on hole four. Ah, uh, he got lucky that didn't kick further right. Yeah, he's gonna stay in bounds. You can tell you this hole's tough. He's not very happy about that. And uh, now I'm gonna give a shout out. Definitely give a shout out to the San Francisco touring pro himself, Patrick Brown. When he's home, he uh, makes sure that this course looks immaculate. When I started playing here, this whole area on hole five was a sand pit. There wasn't a blade of grass. So Patrick Brown, Mike Fig, all the guys that help him out every single day. You guys do an awesome job, and I just want to give you public shout-out for that. We're going to watch Shasta here, Marcus Lai. I agree, Jamie. I can't say enough about Patrick. He's basically working a full-time job on the course. And if, if uh, anybody were to ever need an example to follow of how to take your course and leave it in a better position than you found it, Patrick Brown stands up among, you know, many, many others across the country, the greats that really make this nice sort of shot pleasure. Jackson. This is for three. Can't get it. He's going to take a four on this one. Barsby so wants to Barsby. cash a four. He almost rolls that right in there. And you, have, you have to think, the confidence of a player like Barsby, who's played this tournament so many times, won it two years in a row, there's no shot that he's afraid of out here. And it allows the player like him, with the skill set he has, to take more chances than some of the other guys and, and still play at a high level. Did every single one of those guys bogey that hole? I think they did. That is going to be a 5P for Shasta, a 4 for Doug, 4 for Barsby, 4 for Proctor. I told you, that hole is really hard. And here's we're going to go on. This is almost like the amen corner of uh, Golden Gate right here. It's 5 in the C pin and 6 in the D pin. This is another Patrick Brown special. He designed this pin. Uh, it didn't exist before a couple years ago. You have to get up through this gap if you follow the trail into the back, down into a bowl, and then an elevated basket. Oh, that shot looked pretty good there. Doug took the inside gap. That one does work really well. That, that does look to be in the right gap. And Greg gets a nice Ooh. little local kick oh. and then takes it right He'll back away. He'll have a away. putt, though. He will have a putt. He definitely had the distance on that shot to still be looking. And Shasta with his low line shot that he's known for. I think he, he probably has the lowest release point of shot. any pro that I've seen. But he plays those he plays those laser lines so tight. And this is a big putt right here. Bang. And that's huge. That was a death putt right there, which actually sponsored this hole. Give a big shout out to Eric Langton. Another great putt, but two birdies in this hole is great. Patrick Brown designed this uh, new pin position recently, and it's awesome. Just adds a new element to it. And Doug doesn't want to be outdone, so he's definitely going to run this as well. Oh, wow. I can't believe three of those guys got this hole. That's awesome. Catches in the outside chain. And right after I turned the camera off, James Proctor said, I didn't think I'd be the one to mess up that star frame. So uh, moving on to hole seven. Six holes in. We've seen some birdies. We've seen some bogeys. And it can go either way when it's in the longs. This is a course that if you'll see the scores on PDJ, you'll notice some really low rounds on Friday and Saturday. But suddenly when you put this in all the stretched positions, it becomes a much tougher look. This hole right here, I believe, weighs about 370, 360. It's a left to right almost the entire way. It goes uphill, then downhill. It's a really good uh, backhand turnover, but the forehand here works really well if you have the power. And uh, Doug got fading the wrong way. Barsby's going to opt for the forehand, and this is looking that is beautiful. so nice until it just kicks that last tree. But he will still have a look. Shasta's going to take an interesting route. He's going to take uh, what we call the local gap, where the tunnel, the slimmer tunnel on the right that actually plays by where the shorter pin is, you can get... Uh, some neutral skips and be looking at it as well if you don't want to play it up into the air as much. And the hole plays a little shorter going that gap too. Proctor turns it over a little early right there, otherwise he would have had 30 to 40 footer. Now he's left with a tough one. And this is Shasta from in the bush. And he Not almost bad. throws that one in. 
Doug's about pin high, but he's going to be at least 100 left of the pin. Just going to have to throw an upshot and take a three right here and hope nobody can can a long one. And, uh, Barsby for birdie here. Here's another opportunity for Barsby. Uh, he definitely wants to get another one back. He took two from James, gave two right back. Oh, he knew he needed that stroke right there. He wasn't happy about missing that putt. He definitely wasn't. Um, he is three back at this point after getting the birdie on six. And everybody's going to take a three. And you know, I'm psyched right now. They're going to come into the only part of this course in this setup where you can really go on a run. 8C, 9C, 10C, and 11C. And uh, that will take us through the rest of the video. So let's see if we can score some birdies. 8C, affectionately called the Hobbit Hole. Uh, it's tucked way right, it's down, it's got the shrubs guarding it, so you really have to pay attention not only for the right-handers to come in on an ante. Ooh, that looks pretty good right there. He's gonna catch oh, the bush. Oh, just a little early. The guardian bush if you're too short. If you're too long, there's some gnarly trees that will take you. This is a forehand's delight though, I have to say. That looks really good, it's got the height, the distance. You have to see where he ends up. Shasta Chris is throwing a forehand. Alert the media and alert them that that's a park job. Wow, nice shot, Shasta. Here's James, he's gonna opt for this Heiser flip backhand. You can see the snap when he throws it, it's so furious. And he's gonna catch the same bush that Doug does. And Those are fun putts right there, though. This it's is pretty a protected. Look. There is a gap. That didn't come out of uh, Doug's hand quite the way he wanted. And as you can see, this very protected pin Nice window, he gets it. Barsby's a little bit long, and that's a tough line. Bang! Oh. And an even tougher result. That was a beautiful run. One thing this hole can do, if you go long on your pot, you can have the weirdest 12-footer ever. And that was a cut through. Wow. Straight through the chains. That's Shasta's unfortunate. getting two strokes off the leader. Shasta will take uh, two strokes correct off of James, one stroke off Barsby with a nice park job, and Doug will tap in for his three as well. 9C. We've got uh, this, this hole is one that you definitely hate to miss. It sets up very nicely for a righty hyzer, just a nice putter or maybe mid-range control shot that every one of these guys has in their bag. It's protected by a very interesting obstacle we like to call Jeffrica. Uh, you'll see- Shout out to Jeff Faze right there. Big Jeff Faser. Another really prominent NorCal player. And won this tournament. He has. And that should be good enough for Shasta. That's good. And you can see some see... OB rope behind uh, behind the basket that Patrick Brown just installed, like a new garden to grow some grass. Once again, grass that's never been seen on this course before. And that's a nice shot for Doug. He knows the line. Barsby, just like so on early. three, got early. You're absolutely right. And Jeffrica got him. James is going to take. He gets a little early, too. He looked like he threw it with enough power, but the uh, he just throwing a really overstable mid-range is my guess because that was uh, not what he intended for sure. And there's going to have to be a couple pitch-ups. Uh, James can give this a half run, but gave it a good chance. Nice pot, Doug. And Doug will take a stroke. He started off a little shaky, and you can see his confidence is starting to build. Um, he doesn't have quite the camera experience or the touring experience that all these other guys do, but you know he's playing along with them at just as high of a level. And to this point, we're through nine holes. Greg Barsby has closed the gap to two strokes behind James Proctor, so you know we're in for a great back nine and some bonus par fours. And we're going on to hole 10. Uh, this is one of the holes, there's many like it on this course, where you can't always feel the wind from the tee pad. Uh, the way the, the wind shifts through the park, the, the wind can only be felt once you start walking out. So this makes that hole that much trickier, but should be no problem for these guys. Yeah, this is probably the most open hole in the course. I think it's listed around 299, 300. It's a pretty standard hole for a pro, either a backhand turnover, or a ready forehand works pretty well as well. And uh, Doug's a little bit long there. He got a lucky little slide out, so he'll still have an angle at the pin. Um, it'll be tucked to the right. And this is looking good. Ooh. From the tee, that's that's looking like if it's not Perfect in the shot. basket, it's got to be very close to it. And there's the snap again, but he doesn't get quite over enough on that one. 
He's, yeah, he's got to be disappointed with that drive. He's sliding up into a very tough putt right here. Oh my god. That is... That's that's a touring pro level putt right there. I don't yeah, because if he would have airballed that putt, that putt was steaming. That would have gone past the basket down the hill into the ivy. would have been a tough comebacker. Definitely, this ivy can eat those discs if you run it too hard and leave you with a tough lie, which makes uh, simple putts, you know, routine putts much more difficult. Shasta the turkey for Shasta Chris right there. Nice job, buddy. With another great putt. He's really started to turn the putter on in this round. He's trying to make a charge for it. Uh, he started he started the round, I believe, nine back, and he's gained quite a few strokes on these guys already. Greg's going to get his birdie there as well. But that was big. The momentum shift by Proctor to not let Barsby get a stroke on him right there. And we're going to go into 11. This is another must birdie for these guys, no matter what pin position it's in. It's also another unique hole on the course. This is certainly a signature hole. We've got the pyramid there to the left side of the screen, but we're actually not playing to that pin today. We're playing a little further up. And oh, that's a good shot right there. That's, that's a hard job. That's a great shot. and I love this right hand flex shot. Bend it to the left of the basket, give it some height, let it flex back. Oh, that's going to be a tough spot to putt from. He needed to throw that shot higher. That's not what Barsby wanted at all. And one of the subtle things that you, uh, until you play this hole a few times, it's hard to notice is the way the bowl dips down out the ground, out from under you, it causes some swirling wind patterns that really, uh, you need to have a precise line to get to this pin, and the wind can make it that much more tough. And plus there's that guardian branch. People hit that all the time. So Doug's going to have a long run here to try to not give up a stroke. Nice shot. Almost throws it in. Yeah, this is a tough spot right here. This is a moment where you find out what you're made of as a competitor. Bang. And there's a reason he's won this tournament two years in a row. There's a reason he's always on the lead card here. That was a very clutch putt to not lose a stroke to the leader and to stay two behind him. Chas has gotten pretty hot right here. And that's going to be He did. He got those four row. holes in a row. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. He got the run. Because the next hole is long. And the next hole will be hole 12. We're going to put this up into two parts for you guys. So there's 11 holes. We're halfway through. Greg Barsby's two back from James Proctor right now. We've got some great golf on a beautiful course at one of my favorite tournaments of all time. And I've had the pleasure of having this conversation with Sean Jack. Thanks for stopping by. You got it. You know what? We'll see you at the next one, too. All right. Guys, stay tuned. We've got part two coming up. You don't want to miss the epic finish. We're going to play the whole Marks Meadow plus three other par fours. Golden Gate Safari. See ya.